Batman is known for his supernatural ability to punch, like really hard, so I of course decided to take it away. Well, yeah, there's that, and he's like a Google times richer than Google, but what am I gonna do there? I'm not the IRS. I do have rules though, here they are. 1. Striking and countering are both off limits. 2. Glitching is allowed, but no going out of bounds, because what is happening? I feel like I walked in on something I'm not supposed to see. So the game starts, as you'd expect, with our favorite animal vigilante, Bruce Wayne Catwoman. Yeah, I kinda forgot I had the DLC installed, so, uh, while these parts regrettably exist, I'm just gonna ignore it all and cut it all off later. Get ready to hear that same sentence if I ever decide to change my gender. But now, the real intro, and let's just say it was a little bit strange. <laughs> I need help. And make God safe again. Bruce, did you do a little bit of copying from Trump? Well, I don't. And you brought tear gas? Come on, that's just plagiarism now. But besides me making light of my kidnapping, I am now, uh, staring at a light. This was all pretty basic prisoner stuff, and luckily I was able to swing out of my chair, but alas, I was faced with a guard that's even more masochistic than I am. You like that? So yeah, after getting a good taste of elbow, I was forced to counter. We then finally got to meet our new friends, and oh boy, we are the most popular kid on the block. That being a chopping block, so I don't know if that's a good thing, but eh. Ah, thanks. I know we're in prison and all, but alas, I'm straight. But don't worry, due to your alias, I'm pretty sure you could stroke yourself. We then had to fight fiends in the field, and I tried everything here, dying and... Well, mostly dying, I was gonna do that anyways, but unfortunately, I'm forced to punch and counter here four times. Yep, we're already off to a rock and roll start. And then, of course, our world got rocked and rolled. Let's just call this good old-fashioned revenge. Oh, yeah, and 9 out of 10 doctors would call that a broken hand. I don't know, that other one doctor is probably too busy searching for his frozen wife or something. So yeah, unfortunately, I was forced to counter and punch here five more times in order to get out of my cuffs. God, if only it was actually that easy. I of course kept the suit on because I want to look handsome while you catch some hands, son. Being serious, you may be wondering what I'm gonna do. After all, I don't have any gadgets, I'm surrounded by goons, and all hope seems to be lost. But thankfully, glitch time. And most important of all, it's not out of bounds. If you roll in this specific spot, you can walk onto the garbage and skip the entire fight. I saw some jokers go to the bow. Okay, okay, I deserve that. Repeating jokes is lame. I saw some jo- Now in the actual open, I was able to suit up from my suit to my other suit, and we were being told that Catwoman is being held by Two-Face. So of course, we have to free one bad guy from another. On my way there, I did have the strong urge to fight, as they say, once you pop you don't stop. I don't think that saying refers to skulls, but there is always an eye in villain. The courthouse does have a bunch of guards, but thankfully my stupid testing finally paid off for once, as the balcony door was open. I then got to my actual first fight, the controls. Yeah, I had to wrangle with that for a bit, but the actual guards themselves were tricky. I first thought about using one gadget over and over, but Harvey's aim is dead on. My dead body. I eventually found that I could use explosive gel and crouch knock out the enemies one by one. Speaking of knockouts, meow, who are you? Fuck, wait, that's owls. Ah, uh -huh. come to court often? Look, I know you're the thief here, but how about I steal a small kiss? Yeah, I kind of tried to go for the forced hug thing, but it didn't work out. Got unlucky. Must have crossed a black cat somewhere. It turns out that while I was getting my moves on, Joker was also aiming for Selena's heart. He was apparently sniping from the church tower, but of course that harlot Harley Quinn and her gullible goons are guarding him. Thankfully, it's all sneaking, so nothing hard. Well, Harley Quinn was there and she... No, no, get your mind out of the gutter. She would run up to me, forcing me to counter her. That's what was hard. But thankfully, after some testing, I found that bombs did the trick. Also, she gave me an erection. Funnily enough, Joker used the same solution for his problem. Explosives. What can I say? Maniacal minds, murder alike. Turns out, Joker is pulling a little cosplay party at the steel mill. And I've been invited as Santa. You know, come down the chimney, intrude on private property, break some jaws. Though... 
Now that I think about it, Santa did use the same belt as my stepdad. Honestly, the goons here were more of the same, except this time I remembered that I had this cape attack, so things will be a teensy bit easier now. Then, of course, five seconds after I wrote that into the script, I hit a difficult roadblock. I'll cut to the chase. The armed armorless harmful goon with only one arm is impossible to take down without punching. Trust me, I tried everything, so yeah. You know what time it is. Luckily, there's a speedrun skip that took me a while to learn, but I don't want to bore you. All you need to know is that I'm now in the clear. Unfortunately, even with this shortcut, I missed out on all the fun with Joker. But thankfully, I was still in time for the Rufy and blood transplants. Ah, I'm getting flashbacks to my elementary school parties. So yeah, Joker put a little bit of himself in me, but like, not in the fanfiction way. We went from wheelchair to broken legs, which is usually the opposite of normal, and apparently something is wrong with us. Yeah, yeah, the bad suit and childhood trauma, but I mean something other than that. Thankfully, Mr. Freeze has the cure that we will need. I noticed that there was a nearby flare and said, eh, why no ho 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 bane? Ah, how about you pick on someone your own size? Like, killer Croc, they should be around here somewhere. After going through all the basic goons, I found Freeze's lair, but unfortunately, he's being held by the bottle-eyed penguin. So off to the museum base we go. You know, I think the person who made these characters was on a little bit of cobble pot, if you know what I mean. Protocol 10 will commence in seven hours. Ah, uh, when I was younger, I used to think that countdown was real. Like, I would actually fail. So I spent all my time playing this game. That, and I didn't have any friends. Okay, yeah, it was mostly the latter. Actually, being inside the museum, I found a new move. Now I can slide into your girl's DMs and into your spine, breaking it in three places. As I say, it's not murder if you can hear a murmur. Kill. I ran into a mini armed guy, literally, and that didn't work out so well, so I started to get worried. But then I remembered that bombs are the answer to everything. Looking around, the museum has some truly exquisite exhibits, from dead body in sexy position, to dead body riding a horse, to even one that moved... okay, that one's alive. Hey! Look, it's one of those ironic t-shirts! That cop obviously isn't dope! Okay, it's no longer ironic. Yeah, Penguin has some hostages and he's forcing me into a fight. It would have been a drag, but oh boy, human bowling is so much more fun than I imagined it. Everything though, including some of my limbs, is cut short by another big guy. Again, nothing works here except for punching. There's a glitch so that I could skip all of this, but it means going out of bounds. In total, I punched 13 times. I think it can be improved to 10, but alas, this game has a horrid saving system. Like imagine if Mia Khalifa and a vacuum cleaner had a weird cyborg baby. Yeah, it sucks that much. I saw some guys swimming with the fishes, which looked like so much fun. So I placed an explosive right basically on my face, but alas, it didn't really work out. But in the end, don't worry, I got what I wanted. Yeah, it's the shark section, and honestly, not all too much to say here. I saved a couple of cops, and I finally found Mr. Freeze. But of course, <laughs> that's the laugh of someone who wants to cry, but can't. I spent a crap ton of time looking for the teensiest workarounds, and I found finally found that the speedrun would be perfect, or that's what I would have said if I could actually pull it off. Mr. Freeze spent over one hour slowly cooking in his little display while Bruce and I kept on trying to shove our pointy little head through this wall. I'm not gonna add it to the counter because technically I could have pulled this off if my reaction time wasn't that of a baked turtle. Oh, no, not high. I mean oven baked. The turtle is dead. That's how mind-numbingly slow my reaction time is. One shower to hide my tears later, and ta-da, Mr. Freeze. I'll end him for what he's done to me. What, turning you into an overly skinny smurf? I'm pretty sure you did that to yourself. We threatened the blueberry with his wife's life than his own, and we were one step closer to a cure. God, it feels good to be a superhero. Then the shark. I tried everything here, but nothing. Well, I can't really blame him. I know I'm quite the snack. Plus, he's probably just got a new disease that'll put the whole entire shark world into lockdown. Wait, how did we get here? Oh, right, I need to raft across this water, and no matter what, I'd get eaten. I tried bringing an extra raft, but nada. So, time to look for a solution. I just need to get right over to Penguin, but avoid all the water underneath. And yep, 
Luckily, there's a glitch that'll launch you just high enough into the air that you could fly over the water. This then leads to the penguin, and unfortunately, nothing can be done here except punch once. Anyways, we're up against old Solomon Grundy, who kind of reminds me of my gramps. White hair is a little bit too handsy, and because of that, he gets electrocuted. Being serious, I was looking for ways to get around punching when a massive realization hit me. I'm stupid. I know I get that realization a lot, but I'm being serious. There's an upgrade that can shorten up my combos, and I didn't get it, meaning that I could have seriously saved on some of the punches. But again, since the save system in this game is so crappy, I have to restart everything. Here we go. <laughs> That's nice. Now I'm gonna return the favor and touch you. Mr. Dent is evidently good at giving out dents. Joker gave me any STDs he had, again, not in the fanfiction way, but this was all what you'd expect. High level gameplay, and I was able to cut out three punches. Wait, three? Seriously? That took me forever? <sighs> The Solomon Grundy fight itself mostly depends on gel, but unfortunately, once it's beat down time, there's only one thing I could do. Electrocute him, but that was more for like fun. <laughs> Being serious, the fight contains 30 punches, so I guess we can add that to the counter. Anyways, our next objective is to get some of Rachel Ghoul's blood because. Do I have to explain myself? I'm a bad, it's what I do, and give people horrible diseases, but it's just like those two. We then met this lady in funky pajamas, did some stalking, followed her blood trail, looked through her dirty bandages. Bruce, do you have a crush on this lady? That's a genuine question. How does human affection work? Unfortunately, we were forced into combat, and no matter how many times I begrudgingly bludgeoned my beloved, she wouldn't stay down. So yep, add one to the counter. Robin stopped our little lover's quarrel, and believe it or not, she invited me to see her house. Okay, yeah, you didn't believe that. I used a tracker. I look forward to breaking you. <laughs> Like the man dressed up as a bat over his parents' grave isn't already broken. Give me five, Bruce. On our way to Raish's lair, we learned that Joker has actually found a new secret weapon, one that will completely change the game. Apparently, it's turning his guards into rubber. Look at that bounce! Oh, that would be such a stupid abilo. I'm pretty sure Joker also gave us some booze because I'm seeing all the same symptoms from when my stepdad drinks. Blurry vision, thrown off motor functions, and spilt blood. Granted that blood is usually mine, not his own, but you get the idea. We met up with copies of our crush, and I finally got on one knee to crush her with. I eventually found the entrance to the lair, but unfortunately... It looks like a sword fits here. Whoa, and it looks like a sword would fit in my body. Yeah, as much as I enjoy getting sliced and diced into teensy little pieces, in order to get this sword, I was forced to counter here. We saw the natural near-death hallucinations, a white light, our dead parents, and a female who's actually romantically interested in me. Thankfully, I saw through all of these ploys because they're all impossible. We then were forced to go through some trials to prove that I'm worthy, but before that, drugs. They help with all sorts of tests. Did I mention that I failed high school? And twisting your will. Well, I think it's kind of hard to twist something that kind of doesn't exist anymore. But anyways, this next part massively screws me over. It starts with another slowly decaying body. Now, you'd think that fighting a literal corpse would be easy, but if I've learned anything from Mr. Grundy, it's that you should never underestimate the elderly's ability to kick your teeth in. Raish wants me to murder him, but he doesn't seem to get that there's a list of people I'm going to kill, and I'm at the top of it. I'll get around to doing you after I'm done with myself. Being serious, Fighting isn't all too hard, it's just the forced punching that sucks. I tried everything here. Combos, glitches, and even the line launcher. A man doesn't hit rock bottom before he resorts to using the line launcher. The game really doesn't like it when you play without punching. For example, some of the statues actually acted like statues, which may sound normal, but they're supposed to be killing me. And second, there are points where I'm forced to just take beating after beating. This actually made fighting hard because racking up combos with 50 fists in your face is impossible, and just a teensy small side effect, I would often die a horrible edible infused death. In total, I counted around 50 punches here. Well, technically stabbing doesn't count as a punch. 
Oh yeah, murder is supposed to be bad, right? I started to get a little bit bored of breaking bones, whether that be accidental or on purpose, so I decided to move on to Wills to Live. We got some info that some dastardly thugs were torturing our poor mayor. So cruel. Don't they know that's my job? He gave us the whole rundown, he's super corrupt, so I ruptured his... Well, what would a 15-story drop break? It was finally time to meet up with Mr. Freeze, we gave him the blood, and after creating the serum, he broke it! Right in front of me! I know that without your wife, your balls must be constantly blue, plus the skin, but no need to share the pain! Honestly, this was super easy, it was just a matter of counting all my punches. One, two, three, four, Five, uh, whatever comes after five. In total, there were 26 punches here. <laughs> Arkham City, why can't you be like your younger brother? He doesn't constantly force me to punch. He's already moved out of the house and he doesn't prance around in a stupid alias. Sorry, reliving a bad memory. Harley took our carefully curated cure and the latest news team found an explosive story. Needless to say, while the helicopter crew barely hung on to life, I spent around 10 minutes thinking about news punts. And then I went to go save them all. Care to tell Gotham, what's going on with your face? Well, it's it's an interesting story. I've actually been born with this rare genetic disease called, uh, ugly. You want to see? Anyways, apparently Black Cat is quite a bigger threat than I anticipated because Joker has hired laser pointers in order to distract her. I really doubt that would work though. Oh, oh that is really shiny. Getting into Joker's base was a little tricky for the sole reason I couldn't rub my two brain cells hard enough to figure out this window, but after that, we were in the clear. Get it? Windows are clear. Ugh, it took me 20 minutes to come up with that. I'm feeling much better. How about you? Well, honestly, Joker, I feel like everything is against me. Goons, talking refrigerators. I mean, one day the floor might even attack me. So yeah, after going through countless mindless hordes, meaning I made sure none of them could ever use their minds ever again, it's the clown prince himself, the big J, the man who puts the fun back into funeral. Joker! Okay, that was a lot easier than I expected. <laughs> Joker's fight was just a bunch of goons, pretty normal stuff, except for the one armed Hulk and the even bulkier Hulk. After using aerial attacks to clear out all of the normal enemies, these two are very different. I first used the massive one to damage the hammer one over and over. In total, I spent 18 punches on Mr. Vaney over here and only two on Mr. Hammer. Oh, yeah, and Joker was there. We get stuck, I have to play a Selena, and I had the strongest urge to pull the whole wow, the video's over joke, but honestly, it's been done to death. Kinda like Batman himself. You can take that figuratively or literally. But anyways, we then ran into a new type of guard, and honestly, for a second, I thought I was screwed. Thankfully though, gels, capes, and combos all work. But Batman putting this guy's kids through an electric chair aside, Strange has started his big plan, and I need to stop it. I then had to stop a criminal genocide, yada yada yada, all easy sneak stuff. Gotham will forever thank Hugo. Strange! That's not supposed to be in my stomach. Strange. So yeah, <laughs> Protocol 10 didn't even last 10 minutes. We learned that Raish was secretly pulling all the strings, and while this was supposed to be earth-breaking news, all I could say was, eh. I guess that's pretty cool. After a quick sniper fest, we were taught the big truth. The revelation that is groundbreaking. Literally, Clayface was actually pretending to be Joker all along. Lover shot, all that fun stuff, and I got to the final boss fight of the game. Oh boy, this was... Uh, well I just have to show you. The first stage is easy. Clayface is slow, and getting him on his knees is simple. But no, the game is forcing me to punch. Or so I thought. I found that repeatedly spamming gel was just enough to get by. Then, the second stage. Get it? Stage? Bah. Joker would have laughed at that one. Well, he also laughs when my body ragdolls around, so I don't think that's saying much. Again, I got Mr. Clay on his knees, but unfortunately, I am forced to punch here 17 times. But wait up! Just like any good torture session, it's never over when you want it to be. This section scared the crap out of me, which you could probably tell by all the brown stuff on the floor. I could tell by just how this boss works that this was gonna be a conundrum. See, the main boss won't show his ugly mug until I take care of his goonies, which are also technically a part of him. The real problem comes 
comes from the fact that these small guys only take damage from strikes, which is a big no-no. I spent a lot of time testing every single little gadget I had, but none of it worked until... Insane, right? And I'm not talking about myself. Shush, did you see it? Yep, if I throw a freeze grenade at this massive pool, it does the teensiest amount of damage. Meaning that after sorting everything out, I had a new game plan. I would run into the open, throw a freeze grenade, hop over all the enemies and repeat ad nauseum. The one hitch this plan had was that because I wasn't taking care of the goons, the enemy ranks were constantly growing. Meaning that by the end, I was covered in more goo than... I don't know, think of something funny, this last boss has turned my brain into goo. My plan eventually led to this. I luckily had spent just enough time to lower down his health bar as far as it will go. In order to raise the big guy, I had to slash 8 times and bam, my plan worked flawlessly. Except, you know, the 8 slashes. I think this could be lowered to 5 or 6, but as I said, the saving system in this game sucks. Anyways. Thanks for watching, this video was quite different to make, I don't think I've ever had to raise a counter this high before. As always, thanks for watching, and now for the shoutout. Now this YouTuber has only one challenge video up so far, but it's so long it could technically classify as a movie. Boss Raid beat Final Fantasy VIII without leveling up. His style is very dry, so don't expect many jokes or any at all, but his video is still really well scripted, and I recommend you checking it out. It's still an insane amount of commitment he took. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.